you've been following the internet, I'm sure you've seen the uh, video of the NYPD um, putting a man in an illegal chokehold, thus killing the 42-year-old man. Um, that is the subject of our story today. Uh, basically, this man was standing in front of a convenience store, or what looked like it was a convenience store, and he was selling a loose cigarette, an individual cigarette, which apparently is illegal in New York City and probably everywhere in the country because America. And that specific act is what um, is what led to this man's death. Basically, a bunch of officers jumped on him, one put him in a chokehold, and then they refused him uh, medical treatment. Now, many people are talking about the illegal chokehold. Al Sharpton gave a speech about the chokehold today. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of outrage about police brutality in the news lately. But I want to talk about the crime that he committed. Basically, what this man did was engage in commerce with another New Yorker. And by the way, the price for a loose cigarette in New York City, in case you're wondering, is a dollar. So they wanted the so this man basically died because he was accused or suspected of a crime where he made one dollar in illegal profits. The man who died, his name was Eric Gardner. And um and I feel like it's not only a case of police um brutality. For those of you who don't know, the chokehold or the sleeper hold if you're a wrestling fan, is actually a banned submission technique that the NYPD is not allowed to use because of a death a long time ago. And but but that's like my my problem with this story isn't is, is obviously that the man died like that's and he died because of an illegal chokehold they should have they shouldn't have done that on anybody, but it's the fact that the crime that he committed was a victimless crime and it's like the most natural crime ever. Anybody who smoked a cigarette or seen somebody smoking or knows a smoker knows that if you're like at a bar or in front of a store and somebody says, "Hey, can I buy a cigarette off for you?" You usually say yes. Like you're criminalizing natural, normal human behavior, and like that led to this man's death. Like aside from this, like police brutality, this man was cited 32 times for this action, and it, it's it's a non-crime. It's a victimless crime. Like there was no, there's no justification for the stop in the in in the beginning. And like my point is, is that when you have all these nanny state laws, all these little laws that you pass every now and again is that leads to more police contact. And when you have more police contact in our over-aggressive police forces, you're going to have more deaths. So this, this, this basically is a death that's caused by an almost prohibition in New York City, not to mention the general police brutality of the NYPD. Yeah, this is definitely a case of uh, police stupidity. Obviously, I am not as up in arms about the unregulated sale of cigarettes as you are. Um, and I, I should uh, should note that if any one of us uh, would be up in arms about this uh, based on a personal interest more so than uh, ideology, it would be me uh, because I used to own a tobacco store. And so I had to deal with paying all these, uh, like Arkansas is a 70% excise tax on tobacco, like... I know, I know about the uh, the rigmarole that goes into uh, uh, you know, tobacco uh, laws and selling you know, commerce, but um, because I was in the tobacco business, I'm okay with it being regulated because it's really, really dangerous and it kills people. Um, but yeah, this I, I've seen the video, and uh, you know, you watch a lot of these videos, and again, you don't ever want to excuse police brutality, but you're like, you know, clearly this get you know these people were they were trying to pick a fight. You know, they they were they, the police were there in some. Uh, we've seen videos where the police are there. Uh, uh, if um, if they the police are there for you know some other crisis, and then there's a uh, you know this other jack bag comes up and and starts pestering them. That's really not what was going on here. Right? Like this dude, as far as we know, broke up a fight beforehand, um, and was being, admittedly not you know, pleased with the cops who he felt were hassling him, but the guy was not being violent at all. Like, the, the police really don't have a leg to stand on in this one. Um, there's, it's, it's just hard to build a case for them. And then whenever you, uh, uh, you watch the video, man, there's so many cops. Like, I don't see how many cops it takes to choke one man to death. Um, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, that's a uh, so. What do you think the problem here is? Is is what, for you? What's the single biggest issue? Is this uh, just? Is it police brutality, or is it more meta than that? Is it big government? Kind of what? What? What's really got your dander up here? 
Well, I it's it's a lot of things, and the reason in this particular video, because the guy was a big guy, and he was a father of six, by the way. So he, they left the he they they took a father away from his kids. Just throw that in there. But um, the guy like he's a big guy, and I usually give some deference if police like order a a like physically large man to the ground like aggressively, right? Like I get that, but. The first thing that you see in the video, and maybe there was more confrontation beforehand, but the first technique that the officer uses to submit him is a guy coming up behind him and jumping on his back and putting him in the chokehold. Like, that's the first move, and that is the band move. Like, like I, if, if you were in a situation where, you, like, you have six cops there and you can't, like, restrain the guy, and one cop without thinking in the heat of the moment put him in a sleeper hold, that would be one thing, but... It was the first thing they did, and, like, there's so many issues in this, and it's not that I'm in favor of unregulated tobacco sale, but, like, it's one person selling one cigarette, or maybe sold two cigarettes, and I actually have a personal stake in this more than more than you, because I currently do sell loose cigarettes to people who ask if if I have on me, so, like, but it's it's one cigarette, it's such a non-crime and a non-issue, and it's, it's, it's the non-crime... It's the overreaction to the non-crime. I mean, this is basically a citation. It's a ticket. And then the guy's on the floor after being in a chokehold, and it's all these people leaving him there. Like, you have paramedics walking by with the oxygen that this guy needs. And if you're in a situation where a guy is claiming he can't breathe or he's having trouble breathing, like, protocol says you're supposed to give him oxygen. You have the people there with the oxygen, and they're like, no, you can't have any. So it's 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 a it's basically a shit ton of issues, but I think it starts with the non-crime that this guy was being cited for. Like he, there shouldn't have been that much police contact. I see police officers buying loose cigarettes from people. I see them selling loose cigarettes from people. Like it's the most normal thing for a smoker to do. Um, I don't know that it's it's that simple, Sean. Like I mean, this guy talked about the police hassling him all the time for everything anyway. Apparently the, the reason they were there was because there was a fight that, that this guy had broken up and actually you know done the right thing. Um, I just <laughs> that that makes it worse. You well, know, and that's like I'm just saying I don't know that the, the culprit here is the fact that you know cigarettes are regulated. Like I'm not I'm not just like I don't see that intellectual jump. I'm not ready to make, to make that leap. Um, also, I want to say uh, and Jent covered this as well. Like if you watch the video. Um, the guy, he's sitting there saying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Uh, I had always been taught that, you know, if somebody could talk, if they could say, I can't breathe, then that means they could breathe. Um, but apparently, I mean, that's not the case. And uh, this guy, uh, uh, you know, for no good reason, uh, was uh, was taken out. And as you pointed out earlier, like, there's a father with kid now, right? Was it, does he have one, one son, you said? He has six kids. Sorry, right, Sean, so tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me why this is somehow about regulation of commerce. No, um, that actually is a fair argument that, like, I, 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 I believe the same thing. If you say, um, like, I can't breathe or I'm choking, instead of giving, like, the choking sign, then, um, then what you call it, then obviously you can breathe at that moment. But what he was saying is he was having trouble breathing. And it's a large man. He was a diabetic. And, like, he was unhealthy, also a smoker. Like, he was unhealthy, but the protocol is to, uh, what you call it, give him oxygen. And they had the people there to give him oxygen. So, like, even if even if you, like, didn't believe him at that point, like, why do you have the paramedics there? You had three paramedics there that could have helped him. Also, <coughs> the reason, sorry, <laughs> cough button. Um, also, the reason I bring up the loose cigarette is because that's what the NYPD is saying. They're like, he was under the suspicion of selling loose cigarettes. And he had a gigantic rap sheet, which included 32 incidences of selling loose cigarettes. Like, so like all their excuses are about tobacco regulations that are it's it's a non-crime basically. And I'm not saying tobacco shouldn't be regulated, but if I buy cigarettes from the store and I pay the ridiculous 12 to 13 dollars that it costs here because we're way over tax on the tobacco tax, which leads to a whole other string of problems. I should be able to sell one or two cigarettes for a dollar if I want to. Like, and Batman was denied that right. And like, they didn't say he was selling it to a kid. They didn't say any of that. All that if they would have brought it up if it was like pertinent information. So like, the police totally overreacted. It doesn't take six cops. I mean, it might take six cops to, to do a person, 
but there was no reason to subdue him. Like you were, that's a, it's a ticketable offense. It's a violation. It's not even like a real arrest. Maybe a misdemeanor arrest if he's belligerent. But seriously, like it's, it was a non-crime, and it's unfortunate that somebody died because we have a nanny state. Yeah, well, you're definitely wrong about that. You should be able to to sell the cigarettes without any penalty because the thing is, we don't know that he wasn't selling the minors because he couldn't have been audited by the uh, the ATF or the state tobacco uh, board. Uh, I don't know what it's called in New York. I've only dealt with Arkansas. Um, you know, so like that's why we have those regulations, and that's why it's illegal to sell tobacco without going through jumping through quite a few hoops and paying a whole lot of taxes. But you are absolutely right. It, I mean, that that's really like that's a non-issue. I mean, I I don't want to say it's a non-issue because I know for a libertarian such as yourself, that's a what everything revolves around. But w what's important here is that it, regardless of whether or not you you agree, he broke a law or even, you know, there's no, no debate that he broke the law, regardless of whether or not you believe that that should be a law, that, you know, that should have been something he could break, what we can absolutely agree on is that deadly force is not the response to selling a loose cigarette. <laughs> if you want to have a fine, that's okay. You don't have to choke the guy for selling a loose cigarette. And like I say, um, it, as tragic as this is, I, I, I do have a little bit of hope that maybe something good will come out of this, because we've seen all sorts of videos of police brutality, but there's always, you know, been some way to spin it, like, these cops feel threatened, sure, they overstep their bounds, but you put yourself in their shoes. You see this video, the guy is not being, like, he's threatening in stature, he's a huge dude, and I wouldn't want to make him upset. Maybe this is the video where we turn a corner. I know that's naive, and I'm not saying that it is, but I could see it possibly happening, because this dude, like, there's just, there's no leg to stand on for these police officers.